Okay, rumors are now flying about a mega deal for $850 million to bring Rory McIlroy over to live. And what's added only more fuel to the fire and confusion is the way Rory himself has responded to these allegations in the last couple of weeks. On top of that, we've got Victor Hovland has been identified as the next target of Liv, and he's withdrawn from this week's RBC Championship, just making us kind of wonder what's going on there. Plus, we've got Phil Mickelson talking about how we may see some fundamental and pretty massive changes to the structure of Liv itself. And just kind of wrapping all that up, we've also got John Rahm saying that while he was at the Masters, a prominent PGA Tour player wouldn't even look at him. Just showing that the continued kind of beef is continuing to to go on and just leaving us with more questions and more wonders. Regardless, the post-Masters hangover is clearly in full effect. Full effect, and the rumors are swirling, man. They absolutely Mm -hmm. are. So... Let's talk about first what these rumors are, uh, how in a lot of ways they echo some rumors very similar. It's shockingly similar to the numbers that we heard just a couple of weeks ago ago, from Rory's ex-manager. And I think that it's very interesting to see how much that money kind of lines up and it kind of gives a little bit more weight to the possibility of what's going on here. And then we're going to talk about how Rory himself has been responding, which in a lot of ways did not shoot these rumors down and only added even more fuel, like I said, to that fire. So this comes from, and just just kind of breaking in the last couple of hours here, uh, this comes from an English, it's a business and finance publication, City AM. Uh, and I'll read the quote directly from the from the article. They said, two separate sources have told City AM that they believe a deal is close. It is claimed that Live Golf's Chiefs have offered world number two McElroy an eye-watering $850 million to join, plus around 2% equity in the competition. It would make him Live Golf's big, biggest signing so far, and it could be announced right after the Masters, which is where we sit here we are. Right now. Yeah. And not only that, I imagine, Rory, like what the value could potentially be. I mean, once you have $850 million, how much more do you really need? But what the value yeah, could be seriously. for an additional 2%. And we're going to talk in a second. I want to read some of Rory's quotes about how his his rhetoric has softened on Liv in a lot of ways. He's really, we talked about here on the podcast, he's made that kind of 180. But at some point, it has to leave you wondering, Is there a dollar value where anyone would go? And are we close to it here? I think we're darn close. I think a guy like Rory, who has enough money for generations, he doesn't, I don't think he, hate to say you don't need 850, but what's the guy worth? A couple hundred million, right? At this stage of his life. Um, I mean, I like looking back at at Full Swing on Netflix, you kind of saw how almost angry he was that he was the, the lamb, this the, the sacrifice. He called himself a he sacrificial himself lamb, lamb, he felt like. You know, yeah. and I feel like maybe if that anger is still lingering and he in the back of his mind, he's like, I've had it with the PGA Tour, then I'm starting to buy these rumors more and more. I mean, I thought, honestly, I made the prediction. I said, if he won the Masters last week, yeah. I think that was it. I think he was retiring from PGA Tour golf, taking a gazillion dollars and going over. <laughs> and I thought we were close. And maybe he still is thinking about it. But to answer your question, I think the number is like a billion bucks for one of these main, main guys. Which is, I mean, we're right where we're, we're, we're close. where we're sitting. And the other kind of my own little conspiracy theory here is this idea that Rory has been very vocal in recent weeks talking about how he's we've got to end the bickering we've got to end the divide in golf Mm -hmm. which in a way is its own 180 because you could make the argument if you're basically not a rory fan that he was one of the biggest ones causing the separation when when speaking out against live and all those types of things but it almost makes me wonder if for all the reasons we've talked about in the recent weeks on the podcast of why it's not getting done you know uh, not being able to get all the pga tour players to agree things like that do you think it's somewhere sitting in Rory's mind, the idea of saying, you know what, I'm going to do a deal and force the hand? Because mm. if Rory goes, now you're getting, and we're going to talk about Hovland in a second too, because if Rory goes, and then on top of it, if Hovland goes, it almost gets to the point where it's, it becomes a breaking point where now you've got to do some sort of deal. And not only from the PGA Tour standpoint, but what about the European Ryder Cup? I was just going to say Ryder Cup. 
yeah. right? You yep. get now McElroy, Hovland, the biggest stars, uh, John Rom. Rom, all these guys, and now they can't play on the team. It almost in a way, like, could you imagine Rory saying, I'm going to do the deal for what maybe in his mind is the greater good of golf and say, I'm going to force the hand. It's got to happen. Yeah. You know? So you're saying by him going, then they're going to change the rules and they're all going to come back together for Ryder Cup, right. signature events on the PGA Tour maybe. And we're going to talk in a second about what this whole it's structural change is mm-hmm. that, that, that Phil Mickelson's hinting at. But could it be that now you get the, the combined voice of Rom and Rory is enough to make the changes at live that they've been calling for? That's you know, 72 holes, mm-hmm. cuts... Yeah. Official World Golf Rankings, et cetera, et cetera. But again, where I find this so interesting is how much it echoes that original speculation that really fan, 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 like flamed the initial, fan the initial flames of this rumor that, uh, that erupted only about a month ago. So originally this had come from, um, this was Rory's former agent, uh, Andrew Chubby Chandler had done an interview with Bunkert. And he said, if you were being cynical, you might say that he's going to sign for about 750 million pounds, which is roughly no, the I same number yeah, we're talking yeah. about here. Uh, in a month's time with Liv, because he's paving the way uh, that Liv's okay now, whereas it wasn't. He doesn't need the, you know, the big money, however you want to convert that. But it's odd what he's done, and I'm sure it's a possibility. If he does or not, I don't know. But if John Rahm can do it, most guys can do it. Now, think about this for a second. You're talking the same amount, dollar amount of money. You're talking about a quote from about a month ago referencing in the future about a month's time, which would land us right, right now. Here, yeah. Right? And now you have this City AM saying it's coming from two separate sources. Additionally, again, some some way could argue sometimes you can you can see what you want to see if you want to find the evidence, and some of this could be a little bit too much speculation. But also on the other side of that coin is how much of these little things that we're seeing could possibly be indications of what's happening. Yeah, right. The other big one was, and a lot of people reported on this, that they said that Norman, Greg Norman, who attended the Masters, uh, there was a little bit of beef there, by the way, too. Because uh, he ended up having to buy a ticket, yeah. and uh, did you see Freddie Couples tweet? Yeah, how about that, huh? <laughs> Freddie? Freddie had a little had to get a little dig in there. He said, "You've got all these live players, yeah, thirteen guys in the field. Not one of you can get a ticket. Not get one ticket. of you can get a ticket. Next time, hit me up. I'll get you a ticket." <laughs> Regardless of how Greg got into Augusta, it was reported that he was very closely following Rory's group. Mm-hmm. So. Are there talks that are happening? Are these guys starting to buddy up? And in a previously, we had talked about how uh, Greg Norman himself said he would be one of the first to congratulate uh, Rory if he won the Masters. So again, softening on on both sides. Um, but you know, seeing that he's doing that and all that type of stuff is kind of like keeps adding to this possibility of it happening. Well, let me throw a wrench at it real quick because Rory's a guy who doesn't have many exemptions yes he's number two in the world but you go to live and you don't have world golf ranking points i mean you're gonna drop like a rock i mean he hasn't won a major in a long time yeah right i mean it's been a bit so i mean if he starts plummeting down the world rank i think a guy like rory is going to be meticulous and make sure that he will be able to play on Ryder cup if he goes to live he'll make sure that he could play in all the majors somehow He'll be make sure that there's some type of format change that gets world rank number two in the world that that top five is coveted probably to him yeah so i don't know if it's a slam dunk yeah, but I, I, I think that's one of the biggest indications why this may not happen is because of the fact that you've Rory, I think the last thing he's ever going to do is put into jeopardy his ability to play in majors. But but I have to speculate and think here two things. One, no matter what, eight hundred and fifty million plus dollars changes a lot of minds. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and Rory is he, he's not as young as he once was. Yep. So I still think he's got a lot of potential to win majors, but there's that to think about. And the second thing is we live is still such a, a new and evolving and fluid thing. Who knows if. If, again, if he's leaning on the idea or in the discussions of knowing how the tours are possibly going to come together and Mm -hmm. he might not lose official world golf rankings or how his own leverage may change the structure of Liv. But let's talk about how he responded because I thought this was so interesting. So going back to that original quote about the original speculation that was made by Rory's ex-agent saying he thought that it's totally possible that Rory would go for this big money. 
This is at the Cognizant Classic just a few weeks ago. Rory was asked, and I thought this is Rory's opportunity that if it's not true, to laugh it off and shut it down, right? right? Now, Rory did kind of seemingly being a little bit coy, uh, indicating that he thought possibly the motivation of Chubby saying this was that he's got a book coming out and wanted the publicity. But then Rory said, you know, and you could see the the interview, it's out there on, on, on Twitter and everywhere else, seemingly very candidly, he said, I spoke to Chubby, uh, might have seen him in the Middle East, uh, actually at the start of the year. Then he said, you never know. He might know a few things. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you got to love that. Yeah. Right? So what are you trying to do with us here, know. Rory? You know, Seriously. kind of toying with us in a lot of ways. Um, but. For all of this that looks like, hey, this could really happen, Mm -hmm. there's also the other side of it coming out strongly against it. So first you had this morning, Sky Sports reporter Jamie Weir, he said, I'm told the story is complete nonsense, is what he tweeted out. Mm -hmm. So he was immediately trying to shoot it down. The only response that we've seen as of yet, and this came in literally as we were hitting the seat to record, it came in just minutes ago. Uh, this was reports from Rory's current manager, um, where he basically, he had, this is Sean O'Flaherty, um, he responded to rumors in an email statement saying that there was zero truth, mm. calling it fake news, saying yeah. it wasn't happening. Interestingly though, nothing yet from nothing Rory, Rory himself. Right. Uh, no doubt. He is in the field this week at the RBC. It'll be, I'm certain, the very first question that Rory is is asked. And I would tell you right now, if he does not answer it clearly and, and as directly as his own agent said that, I think that the rumors are just going to take off from there. If he comes he, back with a similar answer that he had at the Cognizant Classic, kind of, kind of beating around the bush with this who knows, mm-hmm. I think... Forget it. We're off to the races in our rumors. <laughs> Someone's coaching him very well today for tomorrow's meeting, for tomorrow's press conference. I'm Depending sure. Depending on what he wants to put out there, but yeah. again, even if Rory doesn't go, Rory, in a way, to if his motivation is truly to end this split and bring the two together and force that hand, mm-hmm. in a way, it benefits Rory to keep the conversation and the possibility of him going to live open to keep that pressure going and it benefits him in a little ways to sidestep it, duck it and let the rumors, if that's what they are fly yep. because then that only further promotes the fact that the PGA tour players board, mm-hmm. those types of guys, they're all going to be like, well, listen, we got to get a deal done. We can't let this happen. We right. can't let Rory go there with no deal. You yeah. just can't do it. Right. No, absolutely so right. in a lot of ways he forces quite a bit of, of leverage on it. Shifting gears from that, the other big name who we saw unfortunately struggled dramatically at the Masters was Victor go. Hovland. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, was shot, what, 81, I think it was on the second day. Um, but according to this and according to, again, that same type of rumor mill, uh, they're saying that he is, you know, the next big target of Liv to go. Um, Makes sense. I always thought him a while ago. I was always thinking Hovland would be a prime candidate for Liv. It's more uh, of that European. Exactly. You know, Hovland makes a lot of sense to me um, because of that reason. You see, like, the success that Liv has had is kind of going after international Mm -hmm. stars, Mm -hmm. more so than here, United States domestic type of stars. Um, Whether it be bringing in that international audience that they're after, whatever it may be. I think they have enough United States stars, Liv. Yeah, and and, uh, they've seen success with whether it's from guys like... uh, Cam, Cam Smith or whether it's, it's it, John mm-hmm. Rahm, whatever it may be, they seem to have a little bit more pull in getting the international stars over. And plus, as we've seen with the way the viewership is, is more of an international product. Now, you could also say that Rory is fits in that category, too, as a European. Yeah. But again, I don't want to I don't want to harp on this too much, but I, I can't let it go by without saying if Rory and Hovland were both to sign deals and go, boy, does that, has that become an issue on the Ryder Cup side? I think it's, it's a huge issue. But, uh, and again, as you're talking, another thing that just I keep thinking about is Rory's obligations. TGL is like his thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Yes. So, I mean, like, 
I don't know. And and n- numerous people have brought that up on Twitter saying if this happens, TGL's in, in even more trouble. But right. that's where I'm saying, like, in a way, this is a lot of <laughs> yeah. pressure sure. to get a deal done. Mm-hmm. It's not only pressure on the PGA Tour. It's not only pressure on the Ryder Cup. It's also, as you just pointed out, pressure on the TGL. Yeah. Because if, if they do lose these names mm-hmm. and not – stand with the deal the divide the fracture only continues yeah that's so true. and and if you have rory sitting here thinking like in a lot of ways that strong allegiance that was once there has been really dramatically pulled back mm-hmm. because of the fact that you know him being treated like a sacrificial lamb you know i i'll, I'll go back to a quote uh from rory just like recently just in january um this really proves, and we talked about this in the podcast before, but it's worth reiterating. This proves how much his rhetoric has changed on Liv. He said, I think uh, what Liv has done, it's exposed the flaws in the system of what golf has. We're all supposed to be independent contractors, and we can pick and choose what tournaments we want to play. But I think what Liv and the Saudis have exposed is that you're asking for millions of dollars to sponsor these events, and you're not able to guarantee sponsors that players are going to show up. And, and he, that is a not so subtle, in fact, a fairly direct praise of Liv and what it's done with its system. Yeah. And it's something we never thought we would have heard out of Rory before. So there's a lot there, but there's also other things to cover. So I want to I wanna shift gears for a second and talk about Phil Mickelson, okay. who seems always at the forefront yeah, of kind of say. saying something, mm-hmm. right? Um, so what Phil had said, and this is coming back to the Masters, and, and you mentioned this last week, you said... This is the first time everybody's back together. And, of course, that's going to be the reporter's first chance to really dig in and ask these guys the questions. And that's exactly what we saw. Yeah, absolutely. We saw a lot of it. So Phil was basically – Phil was asked, and they were talking about the the, the structure of Liv and, of course, coming up official World Golf rankings and things like that. And he said, I wouldn't be surprised if some or all Liv events went to 72. There you go. Some or all. Right. And I don't think he has a motivation to say that unless unless there's definitely some truth to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is interesting because just just very recently we we quoted and we talked about John Rahm was probably the biggest one leading that charge mm-hmm. um, for 72 holes. And it makes you wonder, is John getting his way? So Phil made, you know, he kind of basically – said that but at the same time he he made this kind of a pleading a case that he really didn't think it mattered yeah whether it was mm-hmm. 54 or 72 holes he went on to say every competitive round is an opportunity to play well and compete i don't think it make it makes a difference either way we've got mini tours playing 54 champions tour playing 54 i wouldn't be surprised if some or all live events went to 72 i don't know but it doesn't matter so in a way that was him kind of like shrugging off that it might happen and kind of in a way I shouldn't say shrugging off. I should say kind of validating that it might happen, Mm -hmm. but at the same same time trying to shrug off it being such a big deal because I think a lot of the people who are on the anti live side have said, you don't deserve official world golf rankings because of 54. This was kind of Phil's way of saying, look at all these other tours that do have rankings that play only 54. Right. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, he even went a little bit further, basically saying that winning a 54 hole tournament has its own unique challenges. He said, you have to play well the first day or you're so far behind that it's hard to catch up. Whereas in 72, you can kind of work your way into the tournament and fight if you don't have it the first day. Fight to keep it around par and then make up ground. I could go either way. It's, it's just the nuances of a different format. Okay. Now, I I don't know. I I my personal take I don't see a whole lot to that because yes, I can see how in a 54 hole tournament technically at one round creates a bigger proportion of your overall score, mm-hmm. but I would say that a 54 hole no cut event actually gives you more opportunity to make up ground whereas a 72 hole cut event Yeah, you got 2 days Right, because you're not there to have that third round to make up mm-hmm. even more ground if you don't if you don't get it together and you sure. miss that cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's it's different. I mean, these guys are weird. 
the way they mentally prepare. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure everyone's got like a weird strategy in their head. But yeah, to you and me, I don't think that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it is what it is. But either way, it, it undoubtedly reveals this potential shift. And I just wonder if it's all part of that bigger pie of saying, here are, are two guys who've kind of been the most vocal about not being big fans of the 54 hole structure of live, i.e. Roy McElroy and John Rahm. And if John and if, if Roy McElroy was to go, right, as as his ex agent said, if, if John can do it at this point, anybody can anybody can, yeah. If he did, and now you bring in the two most vocal voices pushing in that direction and top that off, you know, with the fact that Phil is now indicating that it could happen, it just makes me wonder. So Let's do. Let's break there. Let's do a quick word from our sponsors. Then I want to come back and I want to talk about some of this beef that was lingering with John Rahm, just kind of showing, even if we're not hearing as much from Rory McIlroy, we're still seeing that continued kind of grudge match that's happening between some of the live and PGA Tour players. And we even had Tiger Woods give a little update on where those talks are actually at. And when Tiger talks, everybody listens. So let's do a word from our sponsors and then we'll jump into that. Okay, so Foot Choice incredibly popular Premier Series lineup has expanded with now the Foot Joy Field LX. It's a super sleek new shoe. Absolutely love the styling. We got our first chance to put our hands on it at the PGA show mm -hmm. this year in Orlando, and we saw it in its full effect at the Masters this year, guys like Homa wearing it. And it's made with that premium chrome skin leather, and it you know offers really that unrivaled, paralleled, unparalleled beauty, fit, resistance to stretching. So it's not just a good looker. It's also, it feels great when you're out there, and that's so important. I can't stress how comfortable they are, and we've got a chance to really dig into them. I get to find it out from firsthand. So you've got that premium leather. It delivers that iconic look, plus the premium uh, series. It's equipped with low profile spikes that deliver stability and support from the moment you step out on the golf course. Uh, and they come in two color patterns. They've got that navy and white. I love that navy accent that yeah, you see sweet. across the bottom. Yeah. It's great to you know build an outfit around. You've also got the all white ones, which just kind of go with everything. They look so great. So go and check out the Field LX and all of the hottest new golf shoes from FootJoy at FootJoy.com. Hey guys, we're always excited to share exclusive opportunities from Titleist. And to be a part of them, it's easy. You just have to join Team Titleist. It's free. And Team Titleist gives you access to opportunities like prototype testing. That's where you get the white box with the, the new golf balls uh, before the market hits, before they hit the market. Special events. I love uh, some of the special events that we were able to go to through the Team Titleist and even their limited edition gear. I even have to this day on my golf bag hmm. the Team Titleist uh, little bag tag that I love. And, and it, people are just shouting, like, hey, where'd you get that? So you get this cool stuff, and the only way to get it is to sign up. So sign up and join Team Titleist. Go to Titleist.com slash Team Titleist. That's one word team titles okay so tiger just like phil and pretty much everybody else it, when you know the media was their first chance to kind of really press them on where we're at mm. and and i don't want to sound like a broken record here but i have to keep saying it i think that this has been the number one issue with this entire deal what whether it's going to happen if it's not going to happen has been the lack of very clear and concise communication to the fans to the tour uh i'm sorry to the fans to the press and i could even say to the you tour could, because yeah. there's a lot of players themselves who are still in the dark and until we get a little bit more clear leadership from this people are going to continue to be pressed and one of those guys because you know he is not only you know as part of the player advisory board he's not a, you know, only like a, a more official leader in a lot of ways tiger is a very unofficial leader uh and when he speaks like i said people listen sure. so tiger uh, Patrick Cantlay, the rest of that board, players advisory board, they had that meeting in the Bahamas with Yasser and the the Live Golf and the PIF team, and where like I said, we've heard just some gen generalities out of that, and it just kind of echoes that here. So uh, Tiger said, I don't know if we're closer uh, to a deal, but certainly we're headed in the right direction. It was a very positive meeting, meaning meeting, and I think both sides came away from the meeting feeling positive you know kicking the can down the road is right what it sounds like yep in a lot of ways it really does sound like that and, and this is again this is why i just wonder like would rory if these are not true these rumors and there's a very good chance they could be true if they're not true is this rory saying i will let this play out to put pressure on all these guys to start 
actually making decisions and actually communicating them. It's a good play, right? I mean, right now he is the other than Tiger Woods, he is the biggest name that would leave this tour. Yeah, you know he's the biggest name other than Tiger. So, well, uh, Scotty, but we don't think Scotty could possibly leave. Uh, true, I, I would think more so from a worldwide golf perspective. Yeah, I think Rory's more loved worldwide than Scotty. I think Scotty's an American hero. Yeah. you know what I mean. That's how I look at him. Okay, yeah, but, like um, I said, with the international stardom yeah, of Rory, no is, doubt, is undoubted. Um, but it, again, it, it just makes me wonder, like, where, where in a lot of ways, where do we go from here? Because now and we we talked about this you know last week on the podcast the the f- initial framework deadline you know it, it came and, and and was extended they they set a loose deadline of the players with saying that they did not want it to go past the masters that was mm-hmm. their words they didn't want, they actually they didn't even want it to reach the masters because they didn't want it to interfere with the masters now the masters is coming on again nothing from jay nothing specific coming out of anyone at this point, where do we go? Do we just say, uh, you know, do we set another date? Do we say, I'd like to have things done before the FedEx Cup? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or b- before the President's Cup? Or do we just say, we're just going to let it coast, uh, you know, for the rest of the year? Yeah. Regardless, the longer we let it run, the more you're going to have this speculation and the closer we're going to get to the following year's Ryder Cup and all those types of questions. And, and although that Ryder Cup seems far out, Preparations start now. Yeah. You know, identifying captains, you know, identifying vice captains. It all starts now. Right. right. And and a lot of that is going to be influenced by what's going on and what this deal ends up being. So there's still a lot to iron out. The, the other thing I want to talk about, of course, is is John Rahm and what he had said. Uh, because I, I John yeah. Rahm has always seemingly been one to be very vocal and speak his mind. Um, so he was asked, and the question was put to him as well, what his reception was like from the other players. Um, because being in the dark from the fan side, we don't know how much these guys are actually buddy buddy. You know, when you know when mm-hmm. they're together, or is there some degree of uncomfortableness and animosity that's lingering? Right. Um, do some guys feel abandoned by John when? He made the jump. You know, they, a lot of ways they thought he was the guys who stuck around, thought he was on their side with some of the stuff he was saying. And then all of a sudden he was gone. And, and what does that do for their own, you know, position and leverage with the tour? So um, this is an interview that he did right after the Masters with uh, uh, Golf Channel's Hugo Costa. And he said, I think that among all the relationships I have, it has been everything that I expected. My friends are still my friends. So he's saying that when he met up with the guys in the Masters, for the most part, there was no animosity. Everyone was still his friends. However, he went on to say, then someone with whom I was very cordial and had a, had a positive relationship has not even looked at me. If someone changes their opinion of me, it's more their problem than mine. I am not worried. I knew it was going to happen. I didn't know who. <laughs> so... He's kind of saying there that like he knew someone was going to have a problem with him. He just wasn't sure who it was going to be that would. I mean, yeah, we don't know who. I'm going to tell you who, we, who the reporter thinks it is okay. in a second. But why? What do you think? I mean, well, first off, I was just going to say, like, is Rom the first? I believe he's the first live chip, current, like past champion, right? Well, Brooks I mean, Kepka. No, no. What do you mean? For the, for the Masters? Masters? Oh, I thought he was a major champ. Masters, because DJ won in 2020. I don't think he was at Live yet. I think it was the first time a Live player was hosting the dinner and was... Right. So I was thinking Rom went in. I, I wanted to give Rom... Like, I, don't, I don't think anyone feels bad for John Rom, but he had a tough he had a tough week going in. He knew he was, he was going to have a lot thrown at him. Mm-hmm. You know, and, he, and that dinner, that Champions Dinner with Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, and you're not on the PGA. So I know he had a lot going at him. I could see their guys still on tour that refused to talk to him and i think like if i it's funny i want to take a guess on who it could be um i think the guy who the guy who hates i think live the most is cantley Mm. but i can't see anyone anyone else in the field and i'm not a cantley hater but if i personality wise there's a guy to pick who would be bitter about something be him okay well (laughs) (laughs) they now john never said who the player was yeah however Hugo Costa, the guy who did the interview, was asked who he thought it was. Okay. And what he said is, 
important players with whom John Rahm had a good relationship, such as Patrick Cantlay <laughs> or Max Homa, uh-huh. could have had gestures of contempt towards the Spaniard, this Masters. So he's speculating it was one of those two. I, m- honestly, Max Homa seems like, and I don't know the guy personally, but seems like such a laid back, chill dude. I can't imagine. I don't see him being a uh, him being a like guy a who, hater. Uh, a grudge carrier, or a hit, a live hater. His wife, Max's wife, was posting video content with Jenna Sims. All man, like the right. live wives were hanging out. There was no Cantlay involved. And he's Plus, on the player advisory board. Exactly. I would say that if anyone has more skin in the game, might be Patrick Cantlay. And um, who knows? Like I can, I can, like I said, I can only kind of surmise or try to put myself in his shoes. But maybe Cantlay is thinking, you know, way to go, John. You kind of you made my life that much more difficult right, right. <laughs> by going. Yeah. You know. Uh-huh. Uh, you know. Here I was. This, you know. My now I'm I'm that much yeah. harder for me to do the negotiations with you going. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, I just think it had to, in a lot of ways, it had to be more than just a, uh, a, a glance or a possibility of someone not saying hi for it to have rung true enough in John Rahm's mind for him to actually call it out as saying someone would not even look at him. Yeah. To me, that's like saying like, oh, I went to a party with an ex-coworker and the guy wouldn't even look at me. Right. That's telling me that this intent... He's he's there, there, doesn't want anything to do with me. Right. You know, I mean, there must have been a situation on Augusta where this individual where John encountered them and they didn't say hello. I would imagine it's probably in the locker room. Blew him off. Although it doesn't, it doesn't have his own locker room because he's yeah, in the he's champions got his own locker. Room. Right. So yeah. Now the story gets deeper. Yeah. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> Which. <channel? laughs> so look, I mean, ultimately, um, it, it, all of this, like I said, is it's a further indication that we, we just we. We need some answers about where everything is headed, um, but I'm just very interested. I'm watching the interviews very closely this week. We know Rory is going to be pressed, and let's see if he's able to give a very clear answer of whether this deal, potential deal, is true or not, or if he tap dances around it. And if he tap, tap dances around it, is it because the deal's happening, or is it because he wants that speculation to provide the leverage to make you know, the, so you, the two tours come together. So you want to hear him say, no, absolutely not. I, I want to hear dancing s- around it. Right. I want to hear him say something as direct. If, if, if like, and I ultimately he make whatever decision he wants, but in regards to this rumor, correct. I want to hear him say either it's happening, which he wouldn't say which you won't. until the deal's inked. That's why I think, him or I want him to say, if it's not happening, I want him to say, no, there's absolutely no truth to it. It's not happening. We'll see. Because that would be a very difficult statement to walk back, and it would put it to rest. And that would show his intent of putting it to rest. But if he says anything else, it means he's leaving the door open. We'll find out tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast. We'll, we'll stay on top of this one.